I mean, my my like gateway was Naruto, so I've essentially never had an original experience. <laughs> <laughs> like I was literally like, oh my god, I want to marry Sasuke. Like, <laughs> Coming to you from Crunchyroll HQ, this is The Anime Effect, where we take pop culture through the anime lens to bring you the latest news, views, and shows you love. I'm your host, Nick Friedman. I'm Lee Alec Murray. And I'm Leah President. Today, we are discussing the reveals from IGN Fan Fest. Ooh. We're talking a little Evangelion. Ooh. And we're joined by a very special guest, editor-in-chief of gaming and pop culture site Polygon, and host of one of my favorite podcasts, The Besties, Chris Plant. <sighs> Welcome, Chris. Welcome, Chris. Yay, we did it. Yeah. <laughs> We're here. The worlds have finally collided. <laughs> <laughs> we invited Chris on the show because for our main story this week, we are talking all about Polygon's latest anime study, which has revealed some really interesting mm -hmm. findings for the anime industry and fans. Thanks for joining us, Chris. Thank you so much for having me. And now we're ready to see just how powerful the effect of anime really, really is. is. Okay, to kick things off, uh, we have to ask Chris, what is your gateway anime? What is the start of your anime journey? Yeah, what's your origin, Mr. Plant? Man, that's a great question. And what you're going to find out from this entire conversation today is that I am um, a clown and a fraud. And I wish I knew so much more about anime than I actually do. I'm I am that person who um, apologizes and I'm like, I don't know anything about it. I've also spent the last two and a half years trying to learn uh -huh. Japanese. I have two anime <laughs> tattoos on my arm. And I have Let's a, a Adora poster behind me, but I still feel like a faker. Um, but <laughs> I grew up in rural Missouri. So there wasn't oh, really? a lot of access to any of this. Wow. Um, uh, yeah, and um, uh, one of my friends in third grade showed up with a Ranma Half manga. Nice, and nice. Uh, nice. From there, I was just immediately curious and baffled. And I thought I was a big Evangelistian fan because I could only <laughs> uh, associate uh, Neon Genesis with the, I guess, evangelism front. In the my evangelist. Oh, no. I, I, the uh, evangelical that church. That might be intentional. Actually. It probably is. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, it makes sense, um, yeah. And then more recently, uh, as I've gotten more into series, thanks to things like Crunchyroll, honestly, Keep Your Hands Off of Isaacin is oh, yeah. like, yes. just was yes. like revelatory for me in terms of like really bringing me like back back. And I know that's quite recent, but it, it really feels like after that, I, I was fully back in the fold. That's no. awesome. You are definitely not a fraud. Th no. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Not at all. I think you'll find like, uh, our origin stories kind of follow a similar path, finding yeah. out young. I think, mm -hmm. you know, I almost feel like a fraud with my stereotypical Dragon Ball Z, Pokemon, Digimon. Well, same, but it's also kind of the <laughs> era that we all grew up in. Like, yep. that was the stuff that was of easy access for us at True. the time. I mean, my, did. my like, gateway was Naruto, so I've essentially never had an original experience. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was literally like, oh my God, I want to marry Sasuke. Like, <laughs> but You're still I mean, relatable. Yeah. I, Chris, I do have to, I'm going to be a shameless homer here. I am also a Missouri kid, so. Oh, yeah? Um, Ooh, shout yeah. out. So I had. Kansas so, City or uh, St. Louis side? Uh, Kansas City side. Okay, so. good. So you're from the right, like the, the <laughs> yeah, 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 you're, you're, you're know good people. Up. Yes, yeah, now, now I'm like really want to go into. I'm like, are you from like Raytown or like Lee Summit? <laughs> or actually, Dependence? Let's just scrap the rest of right, the video. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. just scrap the rest. Yeah. Of the oh my gosh. Uh, well, um, <laughs> since you're here, we wanted to talk a little bit about Final Fantasy VII. Oh. Get a little bit yes. of that so anime good. gaming crossover. Mm -hmm. So I actually went to see Advent Children Complete in theaters last week, oh, man. which uh, <laughs> which came back to sort of. Mm -hmm. celebrate the release of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. For those who aren't familiar, uh, you should be. It's been out for like a yeah. hundred years. Um, There's no spoilers <laughs> existing at but don't, all. Look, don't feel bad if you don't. There is a lot. Final Fantasy series, uh, it's a series of RPGs. Mm -hmm. Some of them are turn-based. Some of them are like real-time action-based. Yep. Each of the numbered games kind of take place in their own universe. unique universe and yep. story. Final Fantasy VII is probably one of the most celebrated it's also kind of a mixed media project. Yes. So there's the original game, there's a prequel, there's the sequel movie, Advent Children, which is the one that I just saw in theaters. Um, so good. And there are, there's a remake that came out a few years ago and the sequel to that remake is out this week. Is out this week. But yeah, I wanted to ask, like, have y'all seen 
have y'all seen Advent Children? Like, how deep are you in the yeah. Final Fantasy I, VII lore? I owned like the the like box set of the Advent, like the old Advent Children DVD, mm. and I did not actually play Final Fantasy until after I had watched it. <laughs> oh, well. um, but I like worshipped that DVD. Like, I loved it <laughs> so much, and I thought Vincent Valentine was so cool. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I I was like. I have no idea what is going on, but this is awesome and I love it. I am retroactively a fan. I am one of those yeah. um, bad gamers. Again, like growing <laughs> up in the Midwest, um, not a lot of money. Uh, and RPGs involved like renting a game multiple mm-hmm. times, which was like just oh, not going to yes. happen. Blockbuster um, every and, week. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, and, and also, I just made the horrible mistake where my parents were like, "You, we're fine with you loving video games. You can have one console at any given mm-hmm. time. Oh, and I was like, man. great. I'm yeah. going to nail it every time. Yep. Sega CD. <laughs> Sega Saturn. <laughs> Sega Dreamcast. <laughs> and I just I just kept getting it right. Um, unfortunately, That's amazing. I missed like every video game anyone else has played. So I, yeah, I, I, I had to play catch up. I actually, ahead of playing Rebirth, I, I went th- like through the YouTube minds to find like four really solid recap videos. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's what that, I do. <laughs> yes, it, I, I, this is on Polygon. If people need this, this is my service to people because holy moly, this game, even if you played the original, even if you mm-hmm. played remake, even if you played both of them in the last, I don't know, month, mm-hmm. you should probably go back and watch these recaps. Because <laughs> there's um, so much that happens, dude. I hope you're ready for fact checking your memory the entire game. <laughs> We were like, did yeah. that happen? No, it's slightly different. Okay, cool, 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 cool. I don't know what that means. And then uh, going on for another 40 now years. I'm, now I'm just here for a ride. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just here for the ride. Gaslit by cloud. <laughs> right? <laughs> Classic cloud. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm like you. I only rented video games until I was like maybe 13. I don't think I owned yeah. my very first video game until maybe the DS. So, Sorry, yeah, <laughs> I was always like the Nintendo Sega kid growing up. I think the the peak of me having a Sega was both Shaq Fu and oh. <laughs> Maximum Carnage. If that tells you anything about, <laughs> about me as a child. And then I was like, cool, I need to smarten up and actually get, you know, consoles that everybody else is playing. <laughs> I both know who you are as a child and exactly how old you are now. <laughs> oh my gosh well after seeing Evan children in theaters uh we're gonna we're gonna stick with anime in theaters for a second we're gonna talk about end of evangelion mm-hmm. heading to u.s theaters for the very first time in march oh. uh, and all the reveals from ign fan fest that just happened last week all that is coming up in the news be back in a sec All right, it is time for this week's news, and I am so glad we have Chris here to talk through everything that has happened in anime, gaming, and more this week, including what was just revealed at IGN FanFest. IGN had its, uh, I I feel like they do this multiple times a year. Yes, or it it just seems like it's multiple times a year because time time is is a construct. Yeah, Yeah. and (laughs) it's been a full year since the last one. Yes. But as part of that, there was some anime stuff revealed. There was. So we're going to run it down real quick. Yep. Tower of God season two finally showed off finally its very first clip, giving us a look at the new animation style. Yeah, which appears to be a lot closer to uh, the original webtoon. Yeah, which is really mm-hmm. exciting. I'm excited. It looks so good. Tower of God's kind of like if you're familiar with Hunter Hunter at mm-hmm. all. There's mm-hmm. a lot of the initial setup of Tower of God yes. that kind of reminds me of. Do they run down a long hallway for like a really long amount of time? (laughs) At some portions, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. There's a there's a there's an anti daredevil hallway scene in there. Yeah. I mean, I run down long hallways sometimes. (laughs) So chances are, yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, no, it's it it was kind of exciting to see. Uh I don't think we know who the studio is yet. No, we do not. I'm excited to for them to finally be like, oh hey, here's who it is. (laughs) Um, But for romance fans, true beauty 
See, I know nothing. I have not read it. Um, I'm sure it's beautiful, but I'm a sucker for romance anime. So I do know that about you. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And viral hit, which I think have you checked out viral? Yes, I have. I will say it's very much made for the Internet age. The best way I can kind of describe viral hit just as a whole. It's like, I don't know if you guys were a part of the internet where Kimbo Slice was just, you know, knocking people out. (laughs) (laughs) I really didn't expect the show coming here. I'm like now like looking through like our HR thing and being like, am I allowed to talk about Kimbo Slice and what he did to people? Okay, got it. Uh, Yeah, Kimbo Slice track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, But no, that's pretty much what it's like. It's, you know, it's a kid that gets bullied and then he fights back, but it's viral hit because he's fighting back using videos on the internet so it's very it's very much made for for kids of the internet so it'll be cool. really exciting to watch actually. kimbo slice oh. anime is you it's like you're really micro targeting and yet you <laughs> found it you reached across the country and into my soul <laughs> it's like okay cool i know what my he's entire like, identity will be this year he's like this is for me <laughs> uh, oh my gosh speaking of things that become uh, entire identities i'm i'm projecting right now yeah one piece yeah which uh i am watching for the very first time right now episode check 250 oh sweet I'm that's like, about where i am right i'm now. deep in water seven okay it's so good yeah um, but they showed off the first look at Luffy's Gear Five, which if you watch, if you've watched the sub, it's kind of like this like uh, old school like black and white cartoon yeah. influenced yeah. transformation. But this is the first time we've gotten to see the English voice of Luffy, Colleen Clinkenbeard, take on Gear Five in the anime. Mm-hmm. And I've actually been watching the One Piece dub, and oh, so okay. for me, you know, I don't know the context of how we get to this moment, mm-hmm. but I'm really loving the dub. I kind of switch back and mm-hmm. forth, but mm-hmm. I just love the dub. Yeah, I find myself doing that too. Like I've like I'll watch some of it sub, yeah. and then like if I'm like doing work or like doing chores yeah. around the house, like I'll switch back and you know watch the dub, so I don't have to like sit there and burn a hole into my TV. I feel like for something also as like demanding as One Piece, well, yeah. demanding is like a funny mm-hmm. word because it's not in the instant to instant, but the scale is right. Mm-hmm. That's where I like uh, I default to yeah. dub if it's av- yep. available because it's like yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna. There's no way I'm gonna be a hundred percent paying attention this entire time. That would actually right. be a mistake to my family. <laughs> um, so you have this to clockwork perfect. orange your eyes, Chris. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I actually just leave it on while I'm asleep, and I hope that passively it gets into my right. Brain. <laughs> so have you have you watched any One Piece yet or no. before? Honestly, I feel like I can't. I, I always feel like I have that moment at the beginning of every year where I'm like, this is the year I do it. And then I'm really neurotic and anxious. This is so disturbed. Mood. I keep Mood. a spreadsheet <laughs> of how I spend my entertainment free time. And the wow. cool thing about that is I know exactly how many hours every year I've actually had to like do something. I don't want to know that, man. Like, <laughs> I can't but do hours. Here, no, well, no, no. But, but the good thing about that, I know like right off the bat, I cannot watch One Piece. Because if I do, it will eat up an entire category <laughs> of my free time. It's just gone. But like, I'm curious. I want to know like all sorts of different flavors. And mm, I yeah. know if I fall into one piece, that will become that'll become my entire diet. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then lastly, uh, solo leveling, which last week we had Alex Lee and Caitlin Glass yeah. English dub on the show. Solo leveling revealed a documentary. It's a two part documentary. Yep. It's going to be on Crunchyroll. That's going to walk through bringing that anime series to life. It was anticipated for a really long time. I think every year Crunchyroll News publish the most uh, demanded manga or manhwa or adaptations that people want to be adapted into anime. Mm -hmm. And solo leveling, I think, in the couple of years leading up was, if not at the top of the list, it was up there. Yeah, it was always in the top, you know, three to five for sure. Getting to check out this documentary uh, is going to be great to see to see all the people that brought that to life. So we got to go back to other things that I've made into my entire identity and personality. <laughs> uh, that's, that's the theme of news this week. Um, the end of Evangelion yep. is getting uh, U.S. theatrical screenings in March nice. for, I believe, the very first time. Really? I kind of um, swore like oh, it's, really? it's been around like. Maybe in some like uh, you know art, art anime theater, club, like, maybe and, like yeah, you know yeah. Yeah. maybe. If you're not familiar, Evangelion uh, follows 
effectively a bunch of children who mm-hmm. are thrust into a war for humanity <laughs> against the this kind of unknown force called the Angels. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we mostly follow Shinji Ikari, uh, the main character. You may have seen him in memes where his dad is telling him to get in a robot. Right. Sitting um, in that chair with his head down. <laughs> That's Shinji. <laughs> but for as much as Evangelion is a mecha anime, it's also, you know, it deals with surrealism. It deals with pain, emotion, generational trauma. Coming of age. Um, and it has made a big cross-generational impact um, in and outside of the anime culture. Yeah, definitely. All around the world. Mm-hmm. I can't think really of many shows that are so spread across generations as mm-hmm. Evangelion. I would say the typical anime fan is as clued in and in awe of the aesthetics of Evangelion as like probably yeah. when it came out. I would say that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it, it's a fair take. I think it it really does. Sit, the original series really situates itself in that like prime 90s aesthetic mm-hmm. of anime that I think has proven to be kind of timeless. I, oh, I would just also say that I think I think um fans now are far more clued in. One, because there's just the internet, so people can yep. talk about it and you can kind of yep. understand more. But I, I mentioned early on of like, I thought I was a huge evangelistian fan um, <laughs> when I was growing up. And only like, I don't know, maybe like five or six years ago did I go back and rewatch the thing from the beginning. Mm-hmm. And what I discovered to my profound horror was I had not seen all of the episodes and the episodes I had seen were in a random order. Mm. Like I, because I was just getting wow. like VHS tapes mm. from a friend. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So my entire conception of it was like, oh, so I didn't see this at all? Yeah. And I had like formed my entire opinion of it. When you now have the, the rebuild movies. Yeah. So you have like a, you can have your recontextualization yep. of it by watching it again, but then you can watch the act, you know, this from the creator himself recontextualization yes. of the whole series. Yep. End of Evangelion hits theaters in March. Um, yeah, I, I really haven't decided if I'm going to go or not. Because <laughs> I ha- I think I had like a full-blown panic attack when I watched that movie for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Me when I watched the the new Cats film. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? <laughs> James Gordon! <laughs> oh my God. All right, on to a lighter topic. Um, basically the opposite of stress and anxiety, <laughs> yes. depending on how you look at it. It's a Pokemon Presents presentation. Ugh. So to celebrate Pokemon Day, which when you're listening to this will be on Tuesday, the previous the, the Tuesday, previous Tuesday yeah. <laughs> um, they revealed some updates for games like Pokemon Go, Pokemon Sleep, Pokemon Masters EX, and Pokemon, Pokemon Wake Up. Pokemon, <laughs> Pokemon Wake Up, Pokemon Get Ready for Bed. Um, Pokemon Nightcap, you just- <laughs> Pokemon Slippers. <laughs> But the two big announcements, uh, one we'll talk about first, Pokemon TCG Pocket, yeah, which um, I have been calling Pokemon Snap. Yeah, Pokemon <laughs> Snap, yeah. Um, no. I'm so excited for this. My relationship with card games and just collecting cards in general has always been more so, hey, I want to collect these because I think the art's great. But, you know, I played Pokemon as a kid, but then as the game evolved, I was just collecting the cards I wasn't playing and I was so far removed from the rules. And card games have gotten to a point to where they have gotten harder and harder and harder to either get into or if you're in there the rule changes have become so prevalent that it just makes it so difficult and frequent (laughs) right so uh, tcg pocket i think is going to be a great opportunity for them to bring a lot of old tcg fans back yeah and then also maintain those new ones it can be a gateway yeah it can be a gateway what about you chris do you have any history with the pokemon tcg yeah, I um. <clears throat> so there, there's this uh, town called Lee Summit, Missouri. Which, <laughs> you know, like everybody here. I mean, uh, half the people involved in this conversation right now know what I'm talking about. So that's yeah, good. I was um, gonna about one percent of the yeah. listenership. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but there was a like model shop there for like you know older folks who liked making models of like warplanes or whatever. And I had read about um, Pokemon in some gaming magazine when I was like very young and I was like, oh, there's a card game coming out. Mm. I wonder if they will import those. And I went there and like begged them to import Pokemon cards. And they did. But like I could go like once a week and they're like, hey, we have a few more of these if you want to buy them. And I've never felt worse about an investment than I do about those cards because I have no idea where they are. I'm sure they disappeared. Oh, no. 
Yeah. Um, but like, it, it's a shame because my child doesn't get to go to college because of that decision. <laughs> um, I have like a soft spot for the collection of it, which mm -hmm. again, when I, if you had told me about this card game, I would've been like, nah, that, I'm happy for everybody, but no thanks. Um, but then <laughs> peace I, and love. <laughs> peace and love, peace and love. Um, man, you just described my favorite Ringo Starr video on YouTube. No, I, that's what I'm that referencing. Different. Oh my when gosh, he's thank like, you. Thank please, you. <laughs> please. Peace and love. No peace love. more packages. Peace and love. <laughs> peace and love. Wow. <laughs> this is a, this is the weirdest deep cuts of just my life. <laughs> this is amazing. Um, uh, but yeah, then I watched the trailer this morning, right? Mm -hmm. And it has so much emphasis on like, ooh, that feeling of like ripping yep. uh, yeah. a package, yep. and, like yep. pushing through the cards and then the full, like being able to go inside of the cards, which again, it's like, it's giving you something that as a kid, you didn't know you wanted, but it was all you wanted. You're like, oh the yeah, that is exactly, serotonin. I wanted to dive into the card and yeah. make it my life. Yeah. I think the other big misdirect from the Pokemon, I'm considering it a misdirect. I think it was. I, I think it's a big misdirect. I actually. don't think any one of the noted leakers actually predicted this, which is that there's a new Pokemon Legends game. Yep. And it's Pokemon Legends Z A? Z to A? I don't know. We're going back yeah. to Kalos and yeah. X and Y. I'm excited because it's like being a wrestling guy, like and seeing the dirt sheets get everything wrong at one time. <laughs> and then you seeing all the Pokemon dirt sheets get all of this stuff wrong at one time. You're like, man, Pokemon Company just came in like, this is what you're getting. This is this is not what you guys thought you had. But yeah, I'm I'm really excited for Legends. X and Y came out at like a really pivotal time in my life mm -hmm. and so I have a lot of attachment to that mm -hmm. game mm -hmm. um, especially as the first kind of handheld game that yeah. that pivoted to 3D yeah, graphics yeah. and it sounds like you're going to be building Lumio City I think that's kind of what's cool is that we're getting they, they teased at the end of that trailer that we're getting mega evolutions but yeah. and that's something that you know the the Pokemon as a community as a whole that's like one of the mechanics that they've been wanting back for a very long time yeah. me included <laughs> Next up, what draws us emotionally towards anime? Romance, crushes, action, slice of life. Uh, that and more intriguing insights from Polygon's anime opportunity study in just a moment. Now, it's time for our main story, a deep dive into the anime opportunity, a study from the Polygon team that proved what we already know. Anime is a vital entertainment medium, and it's entered into the mainstream culture. Of course, here to help us break it down is the studies editor, Mr. Chris Plant. Woohoo! Hello. Now, I, I, I cannot take full credit. Polygon did partner with, we have like an internal insights and research team. We mm -hmm. also partnered with a market research group called The Circus. Yeah, it, it's so interesting to talk about this here because I've been going around talking about this survey to a bunch of different people, and, and I feel like mm -hmm. it really falls into two camps. There are the people that I share this information with, and they say, why did you tell me this? I already knew this. Anime is big. <laughs> You're on Crunchyroll's show. It's right. called the why? anime effect. Right. And it's like, why? Yeah, I'm like, hey, I hear you, but the whole reason we did this, well, a large chunk of it is surprisingly, there's little evidence for what we all feel in our gut. If you mm. actually look out there for like hard numbers to mm -hmm. prove the scale of anime and its influence on people, especially mm. Gen Z, there is a very, very little out there. So that that's, you know, what I have for folks who are watching this show right now is like, yeah, this is going to sound all very obvious to you. Mm -hmm. Why it matters is now it's like rock solid. And that is the sort of information that then continues to help something go into the mainstream because mm -hmm. it can take out to, honestly, people like me who decide how to build an editorial team mm -hmm. and where they should like make their hires. It can go out to marketers. And it's not a surprise that we just recently saw McDonald's and Toyota make big mm -hmm. you know, plays in anime. Mm -hmm. And then the other side of the audience, honestly, is those people, the the marketers or whoever I meet <laughs> yeah. with, where I say like, here's the data. And they say, this can't be true. I've never heard of it. And I'm like, you're 50. And I don't mean that as a derogatory. <laughs> I mean that as when you were a kid, this was quite literally not available to you. And mm. we tend to have a bias of proximity. And the reason that, you know, 
I, we were a little lucky, those of us in Kansas City who had access to a couple of VHS tapes. It was like we at least had some proximity to it, right? And mm. now because of streaming platforms like Crunchyroll, availability is so wide that it has mm. created this generation that is like really grown up and been raised on anime. I do kind of want to bring up an interesting stat here. So 42% of Gen Z participants watch anime weekly, which outpaces the likes of the NFL, which only 25% of Gen Z is watching. I mean, I'm Gen Z. I didn't watch the NFL. (laughs) (laughs) I tuned into Usher's. I turned, I tuned into the Usher concert. Uh, I was like, we have to ask our resident Zoomer. So this is one stat that I've been going around to like everyone in my family. Like I have older parents, older Mm -hmm. sisters. They're like, you want to watch the game? And I'm like, sure. But then when we're watching the game, I'm going to tell you that more people watch anime. (laughs) (laughs) And also it makes about the same amount of money, um, which I think like is the thing that like really blows my mind. I don't think it's like an accident that the Los Angeles Chargers two years in a row have mm-hmm. announced their season schedules with like anime, with anime. recreations yep. of all the teams. Yep. 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 When I see something like that, they are trying to pull from anime, not the other yep. way around, right? They're yep. trying to say, hey, we need to get young people. Mm-hmm. We need to go where like those folks are. That stat really does stand out because again, every room I'm in, there is always a few Gen Z folks and like you can feel everyone just turn to them and they just nod and they're like, yes, <laughs> correct. <It's true. laughs> yep. Something that stood out to me in this study as a member of the queer community was the high percentage of queer watchers in anime. I, it, it was not surprising to me because a lot of the community that I've found as an anime fan has been with like other LGBTQIA plus people. Mm-hmm. What do you think attracts queer audiences to anime. Well, I I have theories about that. But first, I I would really like to hear what your theory is on it. Uno reverse. I I, I think I would definitely theorize that it has to do with choosing your own destiny, choosing your Mm. own family. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm. And essentially, I think a lot of queer people are set on sort of their own hero's journey of self-discovery, self-empowerment. And I think that is definitely something that drew me as a queer person to anime. Something that also comes to mind is like just the the ability to completely transform yourself as well. I'm non-binary. So like seeing people be able to like transform who they are and like the essence of who they are Mm -hmm. at a like a a snap of a finger is really cool to me. And I can definitely relate that to my like personal journey. Your answer is so much better than mine. I'm so (laughs) glad I asked you. Because mine's going to be very boring and like mechanical. I think your answer is much more um, human and and, and, and by by fault of that, more likely to be true. (laughs) My best guess um, from a really crass corporate uh, since after this beautiful thing you just said is that there is a diversity of content itself within mm-hmm. anime that just doesn't exist or exist at scale outside mm. of it. So like I would agree. Yeah. Wow. You can just find a, an abundance of whether it's specifically queer content or not a mm-hmm. content that has emotions. It's a bold mm-hmm. idea. But like if we want to get into like my larger theory about like yeah. anime's popularity, I think that it is that there is a dearth of a vulnerable and emotional mm. um, entertainment outside of anime. <laughs> and I think the fact that all whatever you are feeling that you can find your home within mm. within the larger anime umbrella, I think that is why we see a really diverse audience within it. Because, yeah, it's serving everyone. Yeah. I mean, we we called that out, too. I, I wanted to ask you about, you know, we know that anime fans, at least from what we see in comments, like they they connect emotionally mm-hmm. with shows. But one of the things that always stands out is anime fans who have, you know, in the study here, 44 percent of anime fans and 58 percent of Gen Z fans have said that they've had a crush on an anime character <laughs> at any given time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm part of that percentage. I already outed myself with the Sasuke <laughs> stuff yeah. earlier. I laid that on I the thing. I think we're all part of that percentage, yeah. bros. And it's like, you, you ask any anime fan, and they, they have yeah. that, con- even if it's not romantic, but they yeah. have that connection with the character. Mm-hmm. With that, I, I I love this stat so much because, again, you say it to anybody younger, or anybody who's an anime fan, and they say, yeah, of course. Like, why would I not? And then you say <laughs> it to anybody older who's less familiar, they kind of like, 
like laugh and they're like, oh, what's up with those weirdos? But the, thing that I, <laughs> the thing that I always remind them is like, like anime, you know, for a lot of people is like friends, right? It's like a comfort mm-hmm. food. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, that that makes sense. I'm like, hey, did you ever like have a thing for like Rachel or like Chandler or Joey on Friends? And they're always like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, and, and you thought you were going to meet them? <laughs> and they're like, no, no. And I'm like, okay, so... I, it, it, there, there is no difference, in yeah. my opinion, between yeah. an anime character and Jennifer yeah, yeah, yeah. Aniston in your existence. <laughs> um, they are both completely inaccessible to you, and you also don't really know that you're, you're what you like about that person is that character that they play on TV mm-hmm. show. So both of them are fictional. I, I think this is just kind of a natural evolution of something that we've been doing for a very, very long time with celebrity. Mm-hmm. And just for the record, if anyone had a crush on Ross, uh, you're not allowed to listen. Yeah. To this show right <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. I I said Ross in a previous interview, and like they immediately were like, "What are you talking about?" And I was like, "I'm sorry, I don't know why Ross, I said that." Ross is the villain. David of Schwimmer. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Also from the study, we learned that approximately half of Gen Z and millennial fans watch anime to pump themselves up before big events. More than half also say that they've referenced anime when needing to make a big decision, like putting together a presentation, or even going on a date. Hmm. All right, so question for the table. Has anime ever pulled you out of a dark headspace or given you a boost that you need to take a step forward? Let's hear what it is. What you got? Yeah, I, I wouldn't work here if that if I didn't have a, an answer to that question. Yeah. Like, that is part of the passion of, like, keeps me coming to Crunchyroll every day mm-hmm. and why I love this place and why I love anime in general. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to just bring up Evangelion again. We just talked about it. But that was at a time in my life where I was kind of leaning into um, a lot of the mental health struggles that I was going through at the time. Mm -hmm. It was a series that, and the reason why I love the original ending and how vague it is at the end is because to me, it mirrors the like potential in, God, we're going to get so deep here. Mm -hmm. It mirrors the like potential and hope that you can find in life and Mm -hmm. not the despair, which is what I think End of Evangelion represented. And Mm so- that's always a series, especially the ending moments that I really go back to um, mm. Mm. to get me in the right headspace. Okay. The weird thing about that time in your life, too, is is your father was forcing you to pilot a Mac. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this weird brain Mac, yes. <laughs> Scott yeah, would come is. down the stairs and say, Nick. You got to do I it. Talk, I just talked to your mother. You said you got to get in the robot. <laughs> you got Ab- you got absolute it. psyop <laughs> moment. Like. Yeah. Um, I, I think for me personally, and it may sound kind of weird, but reincarnated as slime was one yeah. that was really like, I think because the way that Remy Roo kind of approached his life, like after yeah. becoming a slime, he was like, oh, I figured out I'm actually more capable of things than people think I am. So I'm just going to continue to live my life as I normally would, just kind of being a normal person, helping the people I want to help, caring about people. And eating everyone. um, And eating everyone. (laughs) Um, And, you know, learning these new skills because these skills in the greater scheme are not for me. They're for everyone else. Yeah. So I'm, I'm using what I know or using what I have to make everybody around me better. This is really hit hard for me, especially yeah. like when he's in moments that he has to be assertive. He's really assertive. And he's like, no, no, thank you. We're not doing that. We're just going to decimate you and take over your country and make it better. OK, thanks. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it, it, I guess the best way I can say it is he's just a joyful character. And it's very much in the same vein as like a Kirby or like even like a like a Boji. <laughs> like they're yep. just like naturally good characters that are like. I am more than what people say I am. Yep. So now I'm going to more so prove it to myself than prove it to you. But because you're in my sphere of influence, you're also going to see it. And that's always been, you know, just personally for me, that's always been something that I've struggled with is like, Mm -hmm. you know, you're greater than the sum of your parts. So you have to, you don't just go and try and prove it to everyone. Like you have to, you know, really kind of like prove it to yourself. I think a lot of uh, another like aspect of Gen Z really loving anime is the escapism aspect. Mm. I know that that was something that really connected me to it, especially you mentioned going through hard times. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was just so nice to just unlock and just live in a different world. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's hard for me to connect like that with traditional media to such an escapist uh, extent. 
mostly because I'm looking at something that's animated. And so it's like so, so disconnected from like looking at people and thinking about being in the world. And to your point, then I also uh, like talking about listening to to anime themes to get you pumped up. I listened to the rumbling before my interview with Crunchyroll. Mm. <laughs> like from I Attack was, on Titan. Yes, from, from Attack on Titan uh, by Sim. I literally, I was blasting it in my room before I hopped on a Zoom call for my interview. So <laughs> fun factoid. <laughs> oh, I love that. How about you, Chris? Yeah, I mean, I can think of a bunch of specific anime that have like played that role in my life. But I think what, I don't know if this is about getting me pumped, but like really like connects with me emotionally is a story structure that I often find with an anime, mm. which is more this like, so well, I guess I should say like most of the stories that you see on like TV and film when you're not mm. watching anime are this thing called Aristotelian structure or tripartite structure. It's kind of the familiar like, you know, you're going up on the journey and things are getting good and then a bad thing happens and you drop a little bit and then like, you get going up again mm. and then the next act and then bad thing happens and then finally you overcome the odds. Um, but there are uh, countless Japanese stories and anime stories in particular that do something where it's like there's an entire A story of a thing happens. Think about in Totoro, the, the story of the family is happening, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's a B story that happens kind of discreet after that of like, well, now there's the story of all this mystery happening in the woods. And then to end, we get this collision of these two lives of like mm -hmm. the personal life and then this kind of magical life, right? And I find that to be so much truer to like how life actually works. Like I, I, nobody is as fortunate enough to just have this like perpetual movement upwards. <laughs> I would love to think that that's how life works. But if anything, <laughs> if we know where this is all going to be bleak. <laughs> like it, it doesn't just keep going upwards. <laughs> um, hey, as far as we know, you know. Yes. You yeah, yeah. Um, but but I think that I I often find that I can really relate to that. Like that that feeling of there are these two things happening in my day to day today, and how those things collide in interesting ways is is always revealing. And I just find it really affecting when I watch an anime story do that. I I, I think of a, a film like The Wind Rises that does um, something very similar, obviously, with how it portrays a life inside of the government and a life, you know in the mountains with the, the person you love and how those inherently conflict against each other. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Good answer. Just yeah, a great yeah. answer. I was lost Thank in you. that answer. That was, <laughs> yeah, that's, that was, that really was gorgeous. Thank you so much, Chris, for uh, talking with us about the study. Um, it's really kind of great to hear and, you know, see the statistics. And I think you brought it up earlier is like stuff we knew in our gut, but actually seeing, you know, the the actual numbers behind it is, you know, is, is really validating. Something. Yeah, it's very validating. Um, but next up, our favorite part of the show, um, we're going through our current recommendations, whether it be anime, pop culture, whatever. So stick around. We all bought gaming recommendations this week because, of course, we have Chris from Polygon. Uh, playing to the audience. Um, but before we go into ours, we definitely want to hear from our guests first. So Chris, what do you have for us? I guess I have two things because I feel like I should mention a video game um, <laughs> considering I'm coming from Polygon and like my entire right. background is video game. Right. <laughs> I cannot wait for Unicorn Overlord. Dude, um, same. That was on Lee's Rex before and he had to cut it to one. <laughs> it, I'm, I'm perfect. It all worked out. 13 Sentinels, um, means the world to me as a video Fantastic, game that was with the studio made before this. But what I love so much about VanillaWare's games is that they they seem to be obsessed with picking genres that nobody has any interest in making money off of. They're like, <laughs> great, um, uh, what if it's a real-time strategy game and a visual novel? And they're like, are you yeah. sure? And they're like, yeah. And also they're it's like, a absolutely. Wiki. Yeah, yeah and you're like, great, great, great. And now they're doing like a tactical RPG and I'm, I'm sure... Whoever their investors are, like, you don't want to do like open world game or like something. <laughs> no. like a um, uh, or... yeah. They're like, yeah. Habits, trust me. And then also, uh, for fear of saying the name of a show wrong, but I like, I think everyone else, I've been watching uh, Frieren or the, the how Frieren? is it pronounced? Yes. Frieren, yeah. Frieren, yeah. It's so yeah, good. It's um, so beautiful. And holy moly, talk about things that are doing incredible stuff. Um, 
in terms of narrative and structure in ways that I, I honestly am unfamiliar with outside of like, I don't know, kind of like 1950s Italian film and like New Wave. Mm. But the way it is playing with time is, is exceptional. And, and what I would call out for people who are watching it is really pay attention to how it uses montage. And think about how, how montage mm. is used in other things you watch where it's like, mm -hmm. oh, they are learning how to do the new spell or whatever. And that, mm. That's what you would see in so many shows. Or montage is used very literally of like uh, sun sets and rises and then it sun rises and sets a thousand times and we know time passes. But what they do here is they kind of just bounce around activities and emotions and feelings and spaces. And you, you actually can never quite tell, like, did a week pass? Did a decade pass? And that does such an unbelievable job of putting you into the shoes of somebody who can live for so long and mm. helping you actually feel how time would feel for them and how it is both kind of, like, beautiful but also kind of mundane and almost meaningless mm. at a certain point. It's like, I, it's astonishing. <laughs> I, just, I, yeah. I am completely Whoa. astonished by this show. Yeah, I think in the way that the characters age, too, is also such a cool way to tell the passing yeah. of time. Like, Freyron turns around and turns around again, and and uh, her companions are the older. Different, yeah, or they're the different companions. <laughs> or different. Because, or, yeah, yeah uh, that's, yeah, like you said, it's a really cool way to, and, and unique way to tell the passing of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Before I give my recommendation, I'll give you one, Chris. If you, if you like Freyron, The Apothecary Diaries. Oh, uh, Apothecary Diaries is, is so, so good. Um, yeah. Okay. It's airing right now. Long story short, it's about a uh, girl named Mau Mau who uh, wants to test poisons on herself mm -hmm. uh, and has found herself working for the emperor's concubine mm -hmm. as kind of a handmaiden mm -hmm. um, because it's giving her access to all of these elements that she, because she just wants to be an apothecary. Mm -hmm. So it's giving her all of these elements. It has that kind of like slice of life aesthetic vibe that Freyrin does with obviously a much more contained story. So definitely. That sounds it. fantastic. I am it's amazing. to watch it on, let me see. Crunchy roll. Interesting. I will. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, so uh, less insightful recommendation, but I've been playing the uh, solitaire horse racing game that just hit <gasps> Switch after being on Apple Arcade and 3DS, which is where I put a million hours into it. Oh, but man. Pocket Card Jockey Ride On. Heck yeah. Which is, again, a solitaire horse racing game from Game Freak, the developers of Pokemon. Wow. That's really all you need to know. You got to play it. I'm going to go with Capcom Cup 10. I'm a huge fighting game guy. Probably not as good as the games as I want to be, but uh, I have such a soft spot for the F uh, FGC. My dad was actually the person that really, you know, uh, kind of pushed me into exploring my love of fighting games when I was a kid because he always took me to the arcade and just fed me quarters like <laughs> here get through Tekken here get through Street Fighter and I'm like I'm bad at this and he's like nope just keep playing <laughs> keep playing um, but uh, shout outs to Uma who is the first FGC millionaire one with a Yuri and a bracket full of Luke's um, so I'm this nodding end. as if I know exactly I don't know. What I didn't, I, I I didn't got understand it. a yes. single thing you yes. just said. Of course, of course. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it, I always love fighting game season. It was just a really fun weekend to just watch some really high level like Street Fighter, like individual and team play. So that's awesome. Yeah, it was it was really fun. It was really fun. You gotta send me some clips. I'll watch oh, some clips. Oh, dude, I will send you clips all day. <laughs> My recommendation is sort of a video game recommendation and sort of just a music rec. Okay. It is the Persona 5 oh, soundtrack, man. original <laughs> soundtrack. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you're watching or listening to this right now and you're procrastinating your tasks and you need to go and read some <laughs> emails, turn on the soundtrack. It's super jazzy and really beautiful. It's one of the most unique video game soundtracks I've heard in a while. And it could be a standalone jazz album if it wanted to yeah. be. So yeah, <laughs> that's my rec for the week. The other two recommendations that those I could predict. But you're, I never saw it coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And nice. with that, we're going to play Chris out. Chris, <laughs> um, he won the day. Thank you so much for joining us uh, and for diving into the anime opportunity study with us. If you haven't uh, read the full study, you can check it out on polygon.com. And you can also listen to uh, the podcast Chris co-hosts, The Besties. Wherever. I just subscribed today, bro. Like this was yeah. this was so much fun. So Dude, I am like you. excited to listen. Get on that Patreon. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, see, say less. <laughs> 
Yeah, thank um, you, man. This was so much awesome. fun. You're yeah. welcome back anytime. Yes, yeah, we please. should do this again great. sometime. I love it. Thanks, y'all. I'll talk to you later. Later, man. Bye. We love to hear from you guys. And so I think it's about time that we answer some fan questions. And thank you so much for everyone who has written in. Let's go ahead and open that mailbag. What's our first question this week, Leah? <laughs> um, okay, so this question is coming from Kelly Knox. Who is a writer for Crunchyroll News. <laughs> I love, I love out, that Kelly. Shout writer. out Kelly. And they ask, what is the oldest, in terms of production, anime that you have seen and why did you watch it? Oh, that's a good question. Oh. I'm trying to think if y'all have one that's older than mine. I'm trying to think of like some esoteric, like <laughs> hidden art film oh, anime yeah. from like way back when. But I honestly think that it's probably Akira. Oldest in terms of Which was 89, I think. Oldest in terms of Probably production. late 80s. Yeah. I haven't seen all of it, but the original Astro Boy mm. anime from See, 1963. Yeah, that was actually going to be my answer. Like really? When I thought about it, it was Astro Boy. Yeah. But I, I think I remember a number of episodes. I mean, it aired on NBC in the 60s, which I, I wasn't alive a yeah, None of us were. Um, uh, yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. How about you guys? <laughs> um, anyone at home, if you were alive. Um, I'm actually an ageless vampire, so. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Uh, <laughs> but no, I think I remember watching it on those like animated show compilation yeah, DVDs yeah, yeah, yeah. that you'd get at like the grocery store. Yeah. Like they had, had for Shirley Temple. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I Betty had, Boop, Shirley yeah, Temple. Yeah. I had um, a couple of those as a kid and I had no idea why I had so many just random like... Speed Racer would have been on yeah, those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, the original Astro Boy, I watched it because as a kid, it was just another animated show. Like yeah. a lot of anime that I watched and um, yeah, it felt a bit old. It was in black and white, mm. but I really connected with like the character designs and and... The writing was was really good. You know, it's yeah. a little kind of pulpy from from the era that it comes from. Right. But um, I think certainly the concept has stood the test of time. Mm -hmm. Since you said Astro, I mean, I'll just piggyback and just go Speed Racer. Nice. Because I think I'll watch more Speed Racer than Astro. Like, I was diehard into Speed Racer, mm -hmm. especially, like, because I've talked about it before. Like, when Toonami first started, like, they had just classic anime and just random classic action cartoons and stuff. And Speed Racer, I don't know why I was so like enthralled with it. Maybe it was like the weird like stop motion. It was different. Like, like it, it was just different. different. Yeah. But I think it really kind of reminded me of like kind of like F Zero at the time because I was kind of like getting into F Zero on the uh, the tail end of like you know the the nineties. Just the way that they did characters and like the family story mm -hmm. and then like the Racer X was my dude. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, all right. This next question is coming from John Knight on Twitter. Um, and he asks, what is your favorite dubbed anime? Ah, uh, this is such a loaded question for me, I know. Man. I had to make a list. There's so many good yeah. ones. I can pull a bit of recency bias here on mine. <sighs> okay. Um, because during the pandemic, I kind of tried to split my anime viewing between sub and dub to mm -hmm. kind of see what was going on in the dub scene. Because I really do love, I love both mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. equally. Mm -hmm. Um, the Megalo box dub. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. That was that was a good one. Yeah. The um, you know, the directing was great. It really captured the emotional moments of that series. It mm -hmm. worked so well with the score mm -hmm. and the music, which mm -hmm. is obviously, the, I mean, that's the standout of Megalo Box. Mm -hmm. But just, I thought the performances were fantastic and it was an easy watch. Mm -hmm. I, think it's, I think the first season was 12 episodes. Yes, yeah, 12. I haven't finished season two yet. I know Same. they brought the cast back, but yeah. um, definitely one I would recommend. I'm probably going to go with Yu Yu Hakusho. Oh, that's um, a, that is a good dub. I have like the, the my list is like, Bam, but um, I think probably because I have such a soft spot for Yu Yu Hakusho, just as just a show in general. But I think that that cast was the dub cast is absolutely fantastic. And there's like certain shows like that one that I'll only watch dub. Like I've watched the sub or I've tried to watch it. I'm just yep. like it just doesn't feel the same. Yeah. So that's one of those ones that I like have to watch dub, and I'll watch it like every few months just because of you know how much i love that series yeah. and like how much it was a part of like just my getting into anime journey yeah, your foundational like, yeah so, exactly yeah. so it's that's definitely mine for sure awesome mm -hmm. yeah i tend to sort of veer towards being more of a sub watcher um and a lot of that is sort of i want to see things as they're coming out too yeah mm -hmm. um but <sighs> I'm going to say it again. Attack on Titan. Sorry. Shout out. Dude, the Attack on Titan dub is 
<laughs> it's phenomenal. It's a masterwork. That's some of my favorite original Japanese audio yeah. work as well. Firing so, on all cylinders. <laughs> yeah, it's just really good. <laughs> um, and just the emotion as well is is really uh, keyed up in in that dub recording. And mm. I think a lot of people really emotionally connect with with those those castings. So yeah. I think that about does us for the for this for this week's episode. Um, another thanks to to Chris Plant from Polygon for yeah, joining us. That was great. That was, that awesome. was great. We gotta have him back. I know. That was awesome. Um, we'll, well, tomorrow, when you're listening or watching this, tomorrow is the anime awards. Woo! It's happening. And be on the lookout because our anime awards reaction episode Ooh. is dropping tomorrow night, Saturday night. You will not want to miss it. I'm going to be in my pajamas. <laughs> we will all be recording in pajamas, just so you know. It will be exclusive to the audio show. Yes. So if you're watching this, head over to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere you listen to your podcasts. But yeah, uh, check it out. You should get a notification when it comes through. We're really, I mean, I can't wait to see who wins. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see the performances. Same. I'm really excited for... Um, was it uh, Oma, the the live band that's going to yeah. be with Shingo too? I recently yeah. just started like following the stuff they do on Instagram, and I was listening to their their live album yesterday. I am so excited for that yeah. performance now, like, but also because I, I love Shamrai mm -hmm. Shamblee. Honestly, but. there's going to be a lot of good live performances. Yeah, I, I'm really excited. I think we're in for a treat, y'all. For um, sure, <laughs> I'm really excited to see. Um, and yeah, so be on the lookout for that. Thanks for joining us for another episode of The Anime Effect brought to you by Crunchyroll and Sony Music Entertainment. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Crunchyroll Presents The Anime Effect is hosted by me, Nick Friedman, Lee Alec Murray, and Leah President. We are executive produced by Jonathan Hirsch, Shara Morris, Alex Lawless, and me. I'm doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> our lead producer is Kyla Carnero, and our associate producer is Zoe Culkin. Patrick Emil edited and mixed this episode's audio, and Tyler Lucas filmed and edited the video. Our head of production is Sammy Allison. Special thanks to Tamika Balance Kalasny and Lauren Moore. Not only will we be back tomorrow, we will also be back next week with even more anime. All right, guys. I think that's it. Yep. I guess that's it. That's it. Bye. Later days. God, I hate doing that. <laughs> Why? How do I have a robot non-human conversation? <laughs> <laughs> we just get an AI of your voice. So you don't have to read it. Like we just it's do a time still for image the with news. a mouth animated. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. I love news. <laughs>